Did you know that you have to check your wheel bearings or repack your wheel bearings every 12,000 miles or every one year? At least check them. Well, today we're gonna do that. Welcome back to Over the Hill Adventures, and today we are going to grease pack our bearings. Um, we have traveled over 21,000 miles. I checked it a year ago and we had just traveled 10,000 miles at the same time I redid the suspension and put the new suspension on. So this time I am going to check the brakes. I'm going to repack the bearings, grease pack the bearings and regrease our Moride suspension, our wet bolts, if we need to. Let me tell you a little bit about myself. So I rebuilt my first motor when I was 15 years old. Am I a professional? I am not. But I'm gonna show you that you can do this on your own instead of putting it into a dealership or having a mechanic come out or taking it to a trader mechanic to grease, you know, your bearings. I'm gonna show you that you can simply do this on your own, however, there is a caveat. If you are not inclined to use tools or mechanically inclined, don't attempt this job. However, for those who are good with doing the things yourself, this is a great job. It's an easy job and you can get it done, I would say within a couple of hours. We are going to systematically just do one tire at a time because all those parts need to stay with that one one wheel and then uh, but at this video we're just going to show you one tire because it's all you need we're going to check those brakes we're going to do all that kind of stuff so first of all let me go go uh, through the tools that you're going to need safety glasses you might even want to use a mask because you're, you're dealing with brake dust and um, brake dust is a very uh, corrosive um, it's not good for your body um, but I don't use a mask, so, but definitely safety glasses, and these are not safety glasses, but these are my bifocals, actually my readers, so I can see what I'm doing. But um, anyway, let's go down the line. Um, quality, quality grease. I use red and tacky um, grease. Check it for yourself. Um, this is made by Lucas. It's a great grease, um, and they've done some tests on it and I was really impressed with the test they've done it. A bearing packer. I have usually done it in the past with just using my hand and a glove. This seems to be a, you know, a, a better way of doing it. Basically, you put, the, you put the bearing in there, you press down and it packs it. So you're gonna need to have that. Um, I lost my other hammer, but this hammer is a pretty good hammer. Um, I use it like this. So I can put in the seals. You're gonna need a big pipe wrench. That's, and you know what? I don't have a socket big enough and you really don't need it, but I, this is just to tighten the, uh, the hub nut. Screwdriver, seal puller to pull out your old seal and put in your new seal. Um, torque wrench, and that's basically to torque down your tires. You tor torque down your tires at about 110, 120. I, I, put, I do it at 110. Um, this is the beast of all beasts. Now all these tools are gonna be available in our Amazon store. So this is the beast of all beasts. I love this thing. Makes a job quick and easy. I take it everywhere I go. Um, this is going to be just to put down our jacks and we put, our, put down our jacks just for safety. Uh, make sure you get brake clean. Brake clean is extremely important. It washes all the brake dust off and it even cleans up the grease and the grease in your bearings. Now make sure um, that you have a good bucket to put all that stuff in because this is a messy job. Make sure you have gloves. Uh, another tube of red and tacky. Uh, a grease gun if you need it. And lots and lots of towels. This is a dirty job. And what I use is I use my cardboard. I'm gonna put my cardboard underneath. I've got my bucket to catch all the uh, brake clean stuff to clean it. So, you guys ready to get going and get started? And let's do this. All right, I'm gonna move this cardboard. So, I like using cardboard. It keeps everything clean. 
Oh, there's my hammer. I knew I put my hammer someplace. You're gonna need a hammer too. <laughs> Make sure you put down your jacks and it's just not for weight. Just put it down for stability, um, to, for safety, okay? And you know, I'm just gonna take the tire a couple inches off the ground. But what I failed to mention to you, yeah, good size jack. And I'm going to move that in position real quick. What's really important is that when you jack up your tire, I'm only going to dot. Uh, check this out. You see, I got Goodyear, Goodyear Endurance. Look how big they are. Rated E tires. But when you uh, use a jack like this, make sure you put the jack underneath the U bolt or as close as to you can. And the reason why you do that is so you do not bend the axle, okay? Very, very important. I'm gonna spin this tire. And I'm gonna test it by pulling the brake. What I did is I pulled the emergency brake cable and that's how you test a system. That's how you test to make sure that it's working. All right, so let's take this tire off. I do not leave home without this. All right, first of all, gloves. Gloves are so important. Now, some folks will take those caps off. And I'll show you the hub, hub caps I'm talking with. And we'll use this. I don't like using that, um, taking it off like that. It just doesn't work for me. So that's why I couldn't find my hammer because that's what I was using. So if you look, there's a little, there's like a little divot, at least they're supposed to be. See what I just did? So let me just take it. So my first observation shows that this looks really good. My, you know, the, the grease looks good. It's the way it looked like before. The wheel turns really well. Uh, I, my first inspection, that doesn't look bad at all. All right. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take this off. This is basically... I want to be careful with this because this is the um, pin that holds. And there's a place. There it is. So there's this. Just take that off. That loop. this takes the place of a Carter pin. You all know what a Carter pin is. You just take this off, it comes right off. Make sure you see the association. Okay, so you can't see because it's greasy. But wipe it real quick. But look at the association from this being flat here. And as you go, you just keep you start wiping stuff. Wipe, 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 wipe. wipe. All right, let me show you something here that's very important. These nuts are only finger tight. The biggest problem with bearing fails is somebody tightened them too much. This just needs to be finger tightened. And because we are not seeding new bearings, and hopefully we are gonna be using the old bearings, there's no reason for it to be tight. It just needs to be finger tight, needs to be snug. That's it. You don't. You, when you first put it on, you use a wrench. And you take this baby. This right here is the, the washer that keeps the bearing in there. And even Rhonda, as she's watching this, she's going to learn and know how to do this now. And you're going to see how easy it is 
Again, it's association with a flat part of the washer. You, you can't make a mistake. Okay, so this is the first, pull that out. This is the first bearing that's gonna come out. Be careful. You don't wanna drop it. And the first thing you wanna do is you wanna inspect it, look at it. You wanna make sure that it doesn't look blue. Blue is usually a sign that it's overheated. This looks really good. I like the way it feels. So that looks great. That makes me very, very happy. Take this off. And so now you see the spindle. One thing I want you to recognize is there's not a whole lot of grease there. And that's the what it needs to be. You don't over grease it and blow your grease seals out. And it looks, everything here looks really good. I'm pleased on the way the brakes look. The brakes look really good. And you wanna make sure you don't get any grease in um, or on the brake pads. Even though you've got brake clean, you wanna make sure that that does not happen. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is I'm inspecting here and I see that it looks to me almost that this, this um, grease seal is starting to fail or it almost looks that way because of the old grease. So maybe our timing is better than I thought. Like I said, it's a dirty job. Get in there, clean some of that out so you can see what you're doing. This mechanism right here is your electric brake. When that thing pulls, or when there's a charge on it, it makes a magnetic um, um, contact to this here, which then what makes it, what happens, it, it, it pushes this brake forward which then engages the brake. You see how that's working? So that's working really good. A lot of people, when they pull their seals, okay, like this, they use, they just use a screwdriver. So I'm just using a seal, seal puller. That's it. Throw away the old one. Boom, you're done. And then it's exposed. What, what happens now, it exposes the back, the back bearing. And once again, you inspect it, you look at it, um, look for any signs of overheating, look for any signs of rocks, debris, you know, that may have came, or any sand, any grinding that may have, have occurred. I'm really happy with this and we are going to be able to use these bearings again. Put that to the side for right now. And now the process now is just to clean this out. See that? That's dirty grease. That's old grease and that needs to come out. So got most of that out of there. All right, come to this side. I'm kind of moving kind of fast because I don't want this to be an hour long video. Grab my trusty bucket. Grab my brake clean. Brake clean is great stuff. It dries clean. Make sure it cleans everything. Everything gets dry. Do not to contaminate it to anything in there or anything else. It's perfectly clean. I'm gonna put that over here. Okay. Got my trusty bucket in place, my bucket. All right. Use brake clean. Use get all this. This is you never, never, ever blow compressed air on brake dust. Okay. I'm not trying to 
make this all clean back here and be here forever. What I am doing, I'm making sure that the spindle is clean, that there's no imperfections, nothing that we need to worry about. Run your finger across it, making sure I got everything. So ideally, you say, well, Stan, um, how come we can't just put grease in this fitting right here and it comes out here and then it greases the back, the back bearings because you have no way of knowing how much grease you're putting in there and you'll you have a good chance of blowing out your, blowing out the rear seal. I like that spindle a lot, looks really, really good. And what we do is we take our take our bearings. We're gonna clean those a little bit better. And what I even do is I use brake clean to get see that old dirty grease. So I use this to clean the bearings out. Um, of course, other people do other things. I mean, I used to take gasoline and put it in a, in a jug. But you can count, if you're gonna use brake clean, it's gonna be about one can per tire. Okay, right. Really super happy with these bearings. Because I was prepared if I had to change them. So something that's really important about this whole inspection is this little um, dust seal. Make sure that's in good tack. Um, basically the dust seal here is what keeps dirt out. It's a, basically made out of rubber. It allows you to pop that open and inspect and also it gives access to the grease nipple if you needed to, if that's your choice. Um, but inspect it, make sure there's no cracks, make sure, because this is one place where um, things fail. And if that's not good, you need to replace it. They're really super cheap. Um, so, and you just pop it right back in. All right, I think we're ready to um, repack our, our bearings. You put your bearing in there like this, okay. And then you screw this thing on like this. And then you press down on it until you see ah, all the grease come out of the bearing. And you unscrew it. Now you, as you can tell, it's been nicely packed now. Which I wasn't really sure about these little funny little projects, but I thought they work pretty doggone good. Make sure you get a lot of grease on there, like that. Might be a good time just to put some grease in here. And then you just pop your big grease, your big, your big um, bearing right in there. There's no wasting grease. Just go ahead and just put that on the spindle. I have some extra red and tacky right here. I'm gonna put a little bit more right here on the spindle. So the next thing we need to do is we need to put our seal on it, the grease seal. Mind you, make sure you don't get no grease in there. You don't want that, you don't want to do that.
feel and make sure that it's not high anywhere. It feels like it's down in there seated real nice. Confident that that feels really good. All right, now you're ready to put it back. We've got our nicely packed real, real seal. Try to lift this up. Next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna take our little seal, place that, do the same thing with that one. Press down, see how it's pressing out the old, if there's any leftover dirty grease. I'll take some more of this, bring this. Make sure we'll be nice and generous with some more grease like that. You know, a um, huge sign that there's a problem with your bearings is heat, friction. Um, if you don't have enough grease in there or something has happened to your bearing and it's not working right because some sand got in there it's going to heat up and there's going to be a, a lot of friction now remember when i told you about hand tight first of all you got to make sure that this is seat all the way in there i'm going to tighten this baby down a little bit Back it off. Just finger tight. You're good to go. You rock this back and forth. Make sure there's no play. Check it again. Nice and finger tight. Take your lock washer, which is oriented to a flat side there. See the flat side right there? Make sure this clip is on there real good, like that. Good, it's not gonna move anywhere. We'll take some grease, put it in a cup, not too much. Put your grease cap on. Turn it, clean it, and we're done. Now you just need to do that three more times. Exactly the same way. Check it. Yep, that feels good. Turns good. All right, let's get the tire back on. See all this? Let's go brake dust. Take that, just wipe that real quick. I usually put one of these up so I know exactly where to put the tire. Love these new tires. There you go. I always put these on first in the fear of cross threading. What cross threading is, is basically guys will put, put the lug nut in their gun and they'll just get it on, just put them on there and then they cross thread it and then they strip the streads. I don't like doing that. So I make sure I start them first. Then I use the gun. In an L fashion. The next thing I need to do is I need to torque them. 110 to 120. There you go. Now, let me remind you. One wheel at a time. That way you keep all the parts together for the same wheel. We're gonna do a lot more hot twos coming up. We're changing all of our locks. 
on our RV, including our baggage, baggage locks with RV locks. So stay tuned for that. But if you like what you see, you like what we're doing, subscribe, give us a like, and then uh, ring that bell for the next time. This is all so you can save a lot of money doing it yourself. A few hours later. Checked out all, all bearings, all the brakes. Checked out our wet bolts from our new Moride suspension. Everything looks great. I think um, I might try to get some more grease later before I pull it out or pull it back in. I might try to just grease the bolts just for the heck of it to see hopefully my grease gun is still working. Um, but they still have plenty of grease on them. So all the brakes were checked. All the bearings look good. So we'll be checking this out again in another 12,000 miles, another year. The places will go. Yes, ma'am.